Hello, beautiful friends. It's Erica. I'm here to do a video today about basically like a one, two, three punch that's happening here in March 2023. And that is the equinox, the sun moving into Aries, which is the astrological new year, as well as the new moon in Aries, all happening March 20th and 21st of 2023. So this is like a one, two, three back to back amazing energy. And um, my hope is that by watching this video, um, that you're going to get some additional information about what to expect. It's um, I've not been doing a lot of videos on my channel here recently because I've been so focused on doing my client sessions and those take a lot of my time and energy, but this was so important that I felt like I really wanted to come do a video for you guys. And um, I've already pulled the cards because I'm, um, doing the video here a little bit differently today. Instead of showing you the cards, I'm just going to be speaking to you. But um, get ready, guys. I know many of you have been feeling it. I did a video on my astrology channel uh, about a month ago, maybe a little longer ago, about all planets being direct between the end of January and the middle of April when we have an eclipse coming. So um, I know you guys are feeling it. My sessions with my clients have been unbelievably gorgeous and crazy and and so many things that were there was like all the stagnation and all of a sudden boom 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 everything's happening all at once and it's in the sky it's in the it's in the stars <laughs> so I'm going to start by breaking down each of the events in terms of like the theme and then what will be really supportive about that energy and then what will um, maybe be some of the challenges that come with these energies in the cosmos at this time. Um, I will also be doing an extended if you're interested in going more in depth, the link will be in the description box below. So starting off with the theme of the sun moving into Aries. And again, this is the beginning. Aries is the first sign in the zodiac. So every time we come around when the, the sun moves into Aries, it's like a brand new year. It's a fresh start. It's an initiating energy. It's the first sign in the zodiac. So it's like you might be feeling this desire to get out and to start something new. But the theme of this particular, um, sorry, I'm, I have my background because I'm still in my temporary space, by the way, not for much longer, but um, the theme for the sun moving into Aries is all that glitters. Now, what this is asking for us to do is to go beneath the surface. This is to, um, to, to stop wearing a mask, to stop worrying about all of the, you know, the surface glitter, if you will, the, all that glitters on the surface doesn't mean that it's, it's really got a lot of substance underneath it. And so the sun representing the illumination and what we're seeing and where our energy is in terms of our masculine energy, what we're doing is we're getting real. It's like we're getting real. We are no longer being, um, it's like the things that around this time, you'll probably notice, like, I just want substance. I don't want, you know, something that looks good on the outside or that, you know, more materialistic things or more things that look good on the outside, but on the inside, they're empty. So don't be surprised if you start feeling a little bit of that energy. And um, it's interesting. Do you see how much yellow there is all the sunlight? This, I don't, I don't think there could be a more perfect card for this. So what's going to be supportive for this um, energy with the sun moving into Aries is this unfinished symphony card, which is where do you have unfinished business? Where do you have something that's been left undone or unsaid? Do you need to make amends with people? So this is a really good time to stop wearing a mask, pretending that everything's okay, or pretending that you're ignoring the real issue in the room and actually get real and, 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 you know, wrap up cycles, you know, the unfinished symphony card, this one here. And in this deck, I do read reversals, but this card is all about, because it's also a 10, right? Which is a cycle, which is an ending as well as a new beginning all at the same time. So where do you have something that needs to be wrapped up? Because when we think about karma and we think about leaving things undone, that's when we can create some karmic attachments to things because we haven't 
taken accountability. We haven't finished something that needs to be finished or wrapped up in whatever way that is for you. Um, so what may be challenging about this aspect is we're getting to come to the edge card in the reverse. And this, what's difficult about this is we could let fear stop us. You know, our fear stop us from finishing unfinished business. Um, this come to the edge card when it's upright is all about, you know, doing just like getting the courage to go beyond your comfort zone. But when it's in the reverse, it means we let the fear stop us. So while we are being called to things that are beautiful and new and what we would like, there is this uh, uh, things that are of substance. We could let fear stop us. So adding to this, though, I'm going to talk about the influence specifically of the new moon in Aries. Now, new moons are always a beautiful time. Again, new moons are about beginnings, initiating. It's the time that's best for you to set your intentions um, what do you want to create over the next 30, 60, 90 days? Or what do you want to create in this, in this case with the new moon over the next year, because we're starting the new astrology year. So very much that initiating energy. And so it was interesting when I pulled the card for this, I was laughing when it came up. Of course, I can't look it up right now. And it's the co-create card, right? This is where we know that we have a partnership with the divine to create our lives the way that we want to create our lives. And when you pair the influence of these two together, this is a beautiful time of year to say, what kind of life do I want to live? How do I want to feel? Who do I want to be? And knowing that I have the universe on my side, when I align with what's true for me, right? Not just what other people think should be good for me. What's really true for me underneath all the glitter on the outside, I can be, do, or have anything that I want. And what I love about this um, co-create card is there is the, the, gosh, is this a cheetah? I think it's a cheetah. Or a leopard. Oh my God. I don't know. I don't know my big cats very well. Okay. Someone's going to correct me in the comments. I know it along with the owl. So this is where it's like you have the wisdom with you. You have the knowledge from your experiences of whatever you are probably closing out or need to close out once and for all. So, you know, creating a more meaningful life, creating a life that you get up every morning and it and you're excited about what's to come. Um, too many people have been living in this life that they feel like they should live in or they're supposed to live in because maybe they made a commitment of some kind or maybe they, you know, started something, but it doesn't mean that you have to stay in it for the rest of your life. If you've changed, if you've grown, if you've outgrown whatever circumstances there are, and that is really what this is asking us to do is to come to the edge of our comfort zone. So interesting, the supporting energy here is the Between Worlds card world's card in the reverse which again if you've been sort of in transition feeling like you're in one world in another world but you haven't quite gotten there yet this is the time where we're no longer feeling like we want to be in between in that mushy middle not knowing which way to go we're sort of here we're sort of there so we're really not anywhere we're not fully present where we are so when this is in the reverse as terms of the supporting energy around what we're creating is it's like, we're no longer going to be in transition any longer. The time for transition is over. Yet what is going to be challenging us with this new moon in Aries energy is the no place like home in the reverse. Again, a theme of what is familiar, what is comfortable. You know, sometimes home is, is, is a place of comfort, even if it's not just because it's known. And so be, be aware of the tendency with both of these cards coming in the reverse of the challenge is where are you going to have the tendency to stick with what's familiar just because it's comfortable? Um, and some of you may be transitioning out of a physical actual home um, at this time as well. And, you know, the challenge here would be Again, very similar theme is sticking with what's known 
even though like being tempted to stick with what's familiar because we're all being called to go into un uncharted territory, go beyond our comfort zones, expand who we are. What do we want to be? Who do we like? What do we want to be? Who do we want to be? <laughs> it's like, wait a second. That doesn't make sense. Um, who do we want to be? What do we want to do? How do we want to show up in new and new and exciting ways? So adding to this is we're going to look at the effect of the equinox. Now the equinox is between the solstices. So halfway between the December and the June solstice, you know, winter, summer, depending on what hemisphere you are in, are in, in the, on the planet, um, which is equal amount of light and night and day, day and night in the same day. So there's a balancing effect with this equinox and it's where we are both kind of halfway into wrapping and closing something out while we're also beginning something new. So the theme of the equinox and the effect of the equinox is the happy, happy card upright. So guys, this is all about joy, contentment. Where can you find contentment in the present moment? Even though we are thinking about our life and what we want to do and create, you know what? We can set the intentions. We know where we want to go. But if we're always constantly focused on the future and getting there, then we're not enjoying the present. So the equinox effect when we have the sun and the new moon in Aries, which is again, Aries is a fire sign. It's the initiator. It's the leader of the Zodiac. It's reminding us to find your joy in the present moment. What makes you happy? What makes you smile? And, and have that be a focus especially if we're transitioning in our lives, it can be easy to get caught up in all the change. And there is transition because this is a five card, which is all about change. But we are meant and 26. So that's an eight. That's about abundance as well. That's about um, entrepreneurship, you know, enjoying where you're at today. Yes, you always maybe want to be somewhere better in the future, but like, where are you today? And can you find the joy in today? So an ex it's an exciting time. And I know in my life, I've got things lining up some new beginnings and some new transitions that I'm so excited about. I've been sort of in a stagnant place for way longer than I thought I would be. Um, three times longer than I thought I would be actually. And suddenly everything's starting to move forward. So um, you're probably feeling that as well. I know my clients have been, and it's been tr such a joy and a pleasure to be working with all of you that have been called to do these sessions with me one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So I'm going to be doing the extended now. In the extended, I'm going to break this down into the masculine and the feminine energy and the feminine um, and masculine aspects, um, how this will be We'll just get more in depth with that. And I will um, see some of you over there if you are interested and called to that. In the meantime, I send you much love. If you're interested in participating in my global screening of a brand new documentary that I'm so excited about, I did just post a video here on the channel describing it, but uh, the link is down below to check out my um, global screening page that has a trailer for the documentary it has to do with autistic ch uh, children and adults. And it's about incredible breakthrough. And I am beyond thrilled to be part of the distribution of this particular film. I think it's going to make a huge impact in the world. And I am so honored to be part of it. So um, do check that out if you haven't checked it out already. And until next time, guys, I send you so much love. Bye.